Hey guys, it's General Heed here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, we are going to be taking a look at both the Steam and Windows Store editions of Halo MCC, also known as the Master Chief Collection. And then we'll be comparing the two to see what uh, differences, if any, exist between them. So, just a couple days ago, as of this video being uploaded, the latest and I think final insider flight for Halo MCC PC just started. At least I think it's the final one. I heard it from somewhere, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But if that is the case though, then that definitely does mean that the retail release of MCC for, uh, MCC for PC will be releasing pretty soon. We might even get the final game by the end of the year. Uh, but anyways, it was, it was first announced months ago that for the first time, a mainline Halo game will actually be releasing on Steam, which was very much applauded by the community, and every uh, PC Insider Flight since then has been on Steam. However, it was also announced that a Windows Store version would still be released. Now, I know what you're thinking. Historically, games on the Windows Store have been considered inferior due to all the technical limitations imposed by Windows Store apps. We'll get more in depth on that later, uh, but first, as you can already see, we're going to go through and take a look at every part of the latest Insider build of Halo MCC, as well as a bit of gameplay footage for Halo Reach PC. So right off the bat, you can see there's a lot more on the menu now, and it's really progressed a lot since the last Insider flight. It really almost looks like a finished product already at, at this stage. Uh, there's even the new progression system with seasonal unlocks available now as well. Uh, and on top of that, you can s finally see what the armor customization system looks like too. The armors and effects, they actually look pretty great in the new engine for the main menu. If you notice earlier in the bottom right corner, there was also a few buttons for quick access to the settings. The in-game text chat, as well as the, uh, the Steam button to access the Steam overlay. Keep that spot in mind for now, since I'll be talking about it again later briefly. Uh, but yeah, so... There's so many options now on the main menu to customize your game settings. It's very much like what you'd expect from a full-fledged PC game. Uh, they've definitely done a really great job with that. Now, this whole time we've been looking at the Steam version of the game. Let's move on to the Windows Store version. And let's take a look and see if there's anything different at all with the Windows Store version. So... Let's get out the Steam version now and load up the Windows Store version. All right, so notice anything different? If you haven't noticed anything, don't worry. That's because both versions are actually almost identical. The most glaring difference is really in the bottom right corner with those quick access buttons I mentioned earlier for the settings, uh, the text chat and the Steam overlay. It's mostly the same on the Windows Store version there, except the Steam button for the Steam overlay is missing, which makes sense because this isn't the Steam version, it's the Windows Store version. That's really the only uh, difference overall between these two versions, uh, at least at first glance. But you know, even all, all, even all your settings carry over between the two versions, so if you have both versions installed, it'd be a seamless switch between the two, and you probably easily forget which version you're playing on. So. Like I said, this is all just on first glance, but what about under the hood, you might ask? Well, as I said earlier, Windows Store apps, compared to your typical Win32 desktop apps and games, have a lot of limitations that make them technically or technologically inferior for games. Some of the limitations include lack of multi-GPU support, you know, like SLI and Crossfire. Uh, limited, the games are limited to borderless full screen, which are also locked at 60Hz refresh rates. Uh, and the files are also protected or encrypted, and it prevents modding or user customizations, stuff like that. There's also other limitations like being unable to use a lot of overlays, among other things. Uh, but I think some of these might have been fixed or alleviated since Windows 10 first came out, but others still definitely exist. Plus, a lot of Windows Store games in the past, such as Call of Duty, Halo Wars, and so on, they've lacked cross-play with the Steam versions for some strange reason, which essentially made the multiplayer population pretty much dead, <laughs> uh, especially like shortly after release. So this time around, what about Halo MCC PC? Does the Windows Store version hamper it? Well, the answer is nope. Now I'm not 100% sure about this, but it would seem like the Windows Store version is actually just the same Win32 version that's on Steam, 
but it's been uh, repackaged for distribution on the Windows Store. It's not exactly a true native UWP uh, Windows Store app. But aside from that, the game is identical and runs the same too. It's not missing any settings that are available on the Steam version, nor does it have any of the technical limitations that previous Windows Store games have had that I've listed above. But that's probably because, you know, as I speculated earlier, that it might not be a true native UWP Windows Store game. But again, I'm only speculating on that. But, you know, it, it really does not feel like a uh, your typical Windows Store game. Or UWP game, I should say. Because uh, I haven't really noticed any of the limitations. Like, even in the settings menu, you saw, like, I can set the frame rate the, um, to unlimited. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's limited on a refresh rate either. But anyways, with all that in mind, you may be wondering now, which version should you get? Traditionally, you'd probably want the Steam version for its numerous technical advantages over the Windows Store version. But this time around, as you saw, since both versions are almost technologically identical to each other, it's not necessarily so clear which one you should get. Well, based off of all the information that's been announced so far, the version you will want to get depends on a lot of factors. For example, if you are a Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, then I'm pretty sure you'll essentially get access to the Windows Store version and the Xbox version for free, so to speak. Likewise, if you already own it digitally, one of the things that 343 discussed uh, a while back was looking into Play Anywhere support, which means if you bought it digitally, you'll get the PC version as well for free. Um, but last I heard, they haven't 100% committed to that yet, and I'm not sure there's been any update on that since. But if it does become the case, then you might already own MCC PC on the Windows Store if you meet either of those conditions above. In which case, you might not need the Steam Edition anymore. Unless you want to spend the extra cash again for what's essentially the same game. Not to mention the Windows Store version is capable of crossplay with the Steam version this time around, so it's not like you'll be missing out on anything either. So, TBH, if you do go with the Steam version, uh, with the Windows Store version, most likely you'll be pretty satisfied with it and wouldn't notice any differences with the Steam version. Now then, what about the Steam version? Well, if you don't have Game Pass or are already on MCC on Xbox digitally, then it's definitely worth considering the Steam version as well. Why, you might ask? Well, even though the Steam version is, for the most part, identical to the Windows Store version, it might have some things that will entice you. The biggest is mod support. In the early announcements, mod support uh, was basically targeted towards the Steam version, which likely means Steam Workshop or simply letting you have access to the game files to modify with you know, any community-made mod tools. You see, the Windows Store version's files are pretty much encrypted and can't be modded. That's probably the biggest reason to get the Steam version, actually. There will be a lot of user-created mods you'll be able to play, or even your own mods that you might want to create, but that most likely won't be possible with the Windows Store version. But if mod support isn't of any interest to you, then the other reason might be for access to the Steam overlay, which you can also access through the in-game Steam button as well with the Steam version. Uh, also, the Steam version supports Windows 7 and Windows 8, so if you don't have Windows 10 yet, then you actually kind of don't have any choice. You, you have to go the Steam version in that case. But beyond that, any other differences between Steam and Windows Store is pretty superficial. Uh, so it's really up to you which version best suits your needs. But like I said in, uh, with the Windows Store version, that version you most likely be to get with Game Pass or Play Anywhere. Steam version, I believe 343 said that it does not qualify for Game Pass or uh, Play Anywhere. So you will have to, you, no matter what, you have to like pay for the Steam version. <laughs> Whereas the Windows Store version, you might not necessarily have to pay for. Alrighty, well... That about wraps up for this video. Like I said, based on all this information, it's really up to you which version best suits your needs. Uh, there is no must-have version, uh, really. It's, you know, it just depends on which one you really need. Uh, but hopefully you guys did find this video to be interesting and helpful for when the time comes that you have to decide which version of MCC PC you want. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, then as always, make sure to leave a like. Uh, leave a thoughts in the comments. Uh, if there's any other questions you have or if there's anything else you need to look into, Feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I'll definitely do my best to uh, to get around to answering that or looking into it. 
But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.